This sequence explains the method for installing a hydraulic whaler system, complete with optional end bearers, within a trench. Using a certified two-leg lifting chain, move and lay a side rail onto the ground. It is advisable that timber beams are used to aid the assembly of the frame. Attach the hydraulic cylinders to the side rails using nuts and bolts. It is important to ensure that all cylinder heads are aligned, so that all fixing bolts face towards the outside of the assembled frame. If necessary, the head is rotated to the correct orientation. To expand the frame, hydraulic hoses are connected between the pump and cylinders. The safety lock-off valve can then be opened. The frame should be initially pumped out to approximately 100 mm narrower than the width of the trench, so it can act as a guide for the trench sheeting. The lock-off valves are closed before removing the hoses. If required, secure the whaler end bearer using nuts and bolts. Once removed, it is important the transit pin is kept in a safe location. Mark out the width of the trench using spray paint or by staking down timber beams, particularly if the ground is loose near the surface. Prepare a lead trench over the full length of the excavation. A certified four-legged lifting chain is now attached to the whaler rails and the completed lower frame can be lowered into the base of the trench. Separate a single trench sheet from the stockpile and attach a quick-release shackle through the hole. The sheet is then lifted and placed at one end of the frame. Support the sheet manually and remove the shackle. Attach a driving cap to the top of the sheets to prevent damage during pitching and driving operations. Push the sheet to depth or first refusal, ensuring that it is plumb in both planes. Repeat for all four corners. The upper frame can be lowered and held at the required level. Hanging chains are now hooked over the top of the trench sheets and attached to the hanging points on the whalers, with the shackles positioned to take out as much slack as possible. The hydraulic hoses are reattached and the frame adjusted for level before pressurizing to approximately 1,000 psi. The lock-off valves are now closed and the hoses removed. Hanging chains are attached to the underside of the upper whaler and to the top of the lower. If available, an excavator-mounted vibrating hammer can be used to drive the sheets to finish depth. If it is necessary to support the ends of the excavation, sheets are installed to lie against the end bearers. Excavation continues to 300 mm below the required level of the lower frame. Lifting chains are reattached and the weight taken. Depressurize the frame and lower it to sit on the new level at the base of the trench. It is leveled and repressurized as before. Hanging chains are adjusted for length and reattached either to the sheet tops or to the underside of the upper frame. Once the final frame has been installed, dig to formation level. It is good practice to blind the base with at least 50 mm of concrete. Edge protection and ladder access should be placed to provide a safe working environment. Once permanent works have been completed, backfilling and compaction up to the underside of the lower frame takes place. The lower frame is raised and repressurized in a temporary position just below the top frame. The hanging chains are temporarily relocated. Once backfilling and compaction reaches the underside of the frames, they can be removed. Trench sheets can be fully extracted and reinstatement can then continue to ground level. This video is to be viewed in conjunction with a detailed written user guide, which is available to download from our technical library found on our website.